The banking sector in Sri Lanka consists of 24 licensed commercial banks and 6 licensed specialized banks, which has the highest market capitalization at the Colombo Stock Exchange, by representing 26.6% with the insurance and finance sector. The financial sector of Sri Lanka has 14,442 billion rupees assets, of which 62% are owned by licensed banks. In year 2019, year-on-year -year growth in assets on banking sector was 6.2%. At the same year financial services could able to contribute to gross domestic production in Sri Lanka by 795,061 million rupees with 3,604 bank branches. The density of bank branches of Sri Lanka is 17 branches per 100,000 person, while the density of ATM is 23 per 100,000 person. The giants of the banking industry in Sri Lanka are Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, Commercial Bank and Hatton National Bank respectively accounted for 60% of industry assets. Hatton National Bank is a premier private sector commercial bank operating in Sri Lanka, with 251 branches spread across the island. The bank has been internationally recognized by the Asian Banker magazine as the best retail bank in Sri Lanka on 10 occasions from 2007 to 2017. HNB is also placed among the banker's top 1,000 banks in the world and, it was recently recognized as the best managed bank during COVID-19 in Sri Lanka by the prestigious Asian Banker magazine. Today, we have Mr. Satharatna Mathanan, the Senior Manager of Credit Operations at HNB to discuss about impact of COVID-19 to the banking and finance sector, and the moderator of the session will be Demi Candida Pereira on behalf of Group Number 4. Okay, so to start off with, I would like to ask you, uh, now, what contributions do banks make towards our economy, and where do you think HNB stands? Right, okay. Uh, to start with, you know, the banking industry, I will say you first, I will basically tell you what bank does it, right? We basically act as an intermediary role, right? We uh, collect money from customers who have excess money and we'll keep it and we lend it to the customers who need money. It's an intermediary role, right? We'll take Sri Lanka, we have about nearly 70% of our market is SME, that is small and medium enterprises. So we get deposit from all the customers who want to keep their money in safe, they deposit with us. And we in turn lend it to the customers with a small profit margin. In addition to that, banking industry act as another mediated role for to connect Sri Lankans or the locals with international market, right? We, we help the customers, especially on imports, exports, even foreign remittances. We, we banks act as the intermediator to connect overseas banks or the, the world. Uh, so that's another role the, the banking industry actually play. When you take HNB as a bank, uh, we have 23 commercial banks in Sri Lanka right now. Uh, 11 locally local banks and 12 foreign banks. If you take HMP, we have uh, more than 10% market share and about more than 2.5 million customer base we have. And uh, in addition to that, recently the central bank has uh, categorized HMP as uh, 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 there are four banks under this uh, category called systematically important bank, SIB. So Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, HMB, and Commercial, all four banks. So we, we play a very major role in banking industry. And um, <clears throat> the other thing, uh, what I would want to say is we as HMB, we are more, more focused on the retail and SME. So we have been branded as a, a retail or best retail bank several times and uh, best SME banks sometimes back. Thereafter, I would like to ask, now these days we are dealing with the COVID-19 situation. So before COVID-19 hit, how well did the bank perform, especially in terms of its profitability, then liquidity, then uh, giving out its loans, attracting deposits and so on? Well, uh, I would say rather than before COVID, I would say uh, before this uh, Easter Sunday attack, because Easter Sunday attack was the start 
at the fall of the economy and everything. So I think before the Easter Sunday attack, the entire banking industry was doing well. Uh, well, in the sense, you know, the economy was growing. The government had a plan for 2025. They were working on this. The infrastructure was going on. And FDIs, foreign direct investments were coming in. A lot of BOA projects started. And a lot of activities were taking place. So that's real. that was doing well. So banks also... Uh, when a customer wants to place a deposit in a bank, uh, the interest rates were a little bit higher than what we have now. So people also felt that when you deposit money in a bank, you get a higher return. So it's, it's very safe rather than putting it in a share market or buying anything else. Putting it in the bank is very much safer. So interest rates were very stable and uh, uh, people can easily borrow money from uh, banks. A lot of things were there. And uh, especially if you take uh, the deposits of all banks grown very steady, about eight to nine percent deposit growth were there, uh, nine to ten percent advances growth were there. And so, if you take HMV, we we did uh, somewhere around twelve billion profit after tax before COVID, and that also we had a huge volume. We had a lot of retail volume. And, um, you know, there are other products like credit cards, leasing, bonding, those reasons for booming because people want to uh, want to get quick uh, uh, cash from the banks. You know, when you go for a collateral uh, based uh, lending, it take a long time. So people want to get that fast. So it was moving well. Right. All right. So now after COVID-19, <laughs> Uh, because of this pandemic situation, what aspects of the performance of the company were mostly affected and how were they affected? During this difficult time, not a single day the bank was closed, even though it's clo uh, uh, fully, uh, uh, the country was under curfew, the country was under lockdown, we were asked to come and work. Government allowed us, we went in our own vehicle, we carried a risk. We went and did everything. Not a single day the check clearing house was closed. Everything was working. Uh, the ports were uh, open. The, we were doing the transactions. Everything was happening. But the, 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 the economy was not very active than the previous time because the reason is people were really affected. For example, the guy who is, uh, say, doing cultivation of vegetables, He's unable to sell it because he can't go out, right? So your, your neighborhood the grocery shop guy, he can open the shop, but he doesn't have anything to sell. That, that supply chain didn't work. That especially on the salaried employee, a lot of companies uh, did a pay cut for them. And they reduced their salaries. Some people was, uh, gave a, a minimum payment of salaries. As a result, uh, the, the people who borrowed from banks or borrowed from other places were unable to repay that issue they had. Mm -hmm. So then uh, even bank, we've had a lot of issues. And so then we have to intervene and give them moratoriums and assist them to come out of this crisis. So I would say it's a really a <clears throat> uh, very difficult situation for banks. And uh, we, uh, you know, despite this closure of uh, the the country, we open the bank to facilitate customers for pensioners, even for emergency withdrawals. Some customers call and say, hey, look here, I have some important documents at home. I want to keep it inside your locker for safekeeping. So we allowed everything on a case by case basis, but we worked for very minimum hours, three to four hours, but we made sure that we, we, <clears throat> we even at difficult times, we looked after the customers well. But uh, the economy-wise, it didn't do well because uh, imports were totally stopped. Nothing came in. And even the import comes, it took a lot of time to come out of the harbor port. So a lot of things were there. Now, uh, we know that banks have already been using online platforms even before the pandemic times, right? So to deliver their services, to even perform operations. I would like to ask, during this pandemic time, were the use of these platforms enhanced? And because of that, were there any inefficiencies the bank experienced when performing online? 
Right, that's a good question. Yeah. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, online platform, yes. All the banks in Sri Lanka have online platform, like internet banking, mobile banking, you name it, everything is there. Like initially, you know, Sri Lankans, you know, we are sometimes, you know, very difficult for a change our mindset for a change. It is difficult, right? You know, if you, they want to, do the same thing they don't want to change so when we start trying to change these people you know they have a lot of thinking for example giving a basic debit card to a customer right he gets a debit card keep it at home again he comes to the counter for withdrawal mm -hmm. so that's the mindset most of the customers had right so we were trying our best to uh, see how best we can help them actually we started one thing called the walk the talk right you go and tell but it's not going to work so what you have to do is you have to go with that customer stay with him explain him what is the important thing and you must share your experience how this works very simple right for example now if you go to a bank to get an atm card they'll give you an, a secret envelope where you get a pin number so if the guy who is at the counter explain to this customer, once you go and use his PIN number, you will get a message and you will have to change the PIN number. So you now will self memorize what's the password you're going to put in. Otherwise, what happens is he goes there, he put one, two, three, four, something like that. He comes back and after two weeks, he tend to forget it. Then it won't work. Then again, he comes to the counter. So the walk the talk is very important. So mm -hmm. we, what we as bankers do is we always uh, communicate this message to people. And then, but before COVID, uh, the shifting from manual to uh, uh, IT or manual to online platform was very slow, right? The, especially the <clears throat> younger generation, millennials, they were always having the debit credit cards and they were having the online facilities. Uh, but uh, the 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 X generation, Y generation, they were they want uh, to come to the bank and physically feed the people and do that. Especially the retired guys, you know, every month we see those guys come and sit, sit in front of us and tell about their family, tell about the children, what they do and all. So they feel that the physical interaction is more important. Post COVID, we experienced nearly about forty to fifty percent growth in. Uh, online banking, right? So during holidays, during uh, off banking hours, customers were using this facility very well and they got very good advantage also. For example, now the interest rates, the deposit interest are coming down, right? One particularly I can remember this particular circular came, the rates will be reduced by 0.25 or 0.5% on the following day. That time the bank is closed. So one customer called me and said, so I have some excess money, I want to place it. So what I said was whether you have online banking. Yes, so why don't go to this option and do the need for it. So he did that transaction and he got that 0.5% there. There are a lot of credit card promotions are going on. So when you use the credit card, you get a lot of incentive, 40%, 50%, like in the recently, you know, due to the customers who want to improve their business, they were giving a lot of discounts for them to, it attracted and a lot of online, a lot of textile companies have started online, mm -hmm. right? So that is all, even the Uber, Pick Me, you name it, so everything is coming on card. So the online business is thriving now. So that's the way forward. And I'm sure, uh, thanks to COVID, this is moving well. And uh, we also get a lot of business and uh, managing it well. And if you talk about the inefficiency, as I correctly said earlier, uh, walk the talk because people are very scared to this uh, uh, change of system. That is number one. Sometimes due to the higher volume of transactions, systems may get blocked or maybe a delay in reaching the uh, uh, <clears throat> the site. Some issues will come. Those are the inefficiencies you have, but you have to adjust yourself, right? Sometimes during daytime, if you log into your YouTube, anything, the, 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 it's, it's slow. If you do it in the night, it's faster. So you have to adjust your time and do this. To survive during this pandemic time, as Sir, Sir told us, um, there are a lot of issues faced by the bank. 
So to keep up with the situation, what short and long term strategies were implemented by the bank? Well, um, short term in the sense, you know, we have to always make sure that you keep your existing customer. But without customer, you cannot do any business. Rather than going and bringing a new customer, you must make sure that you keep your existing customer happy. You feed him very well and make sure that he is happy. Right? Uh, after COVID, a lot of customers got affected. Right? Uh, thanks to Central Bank, Central Bank launched a scheme uh, to support customers by channeling funds through the banks called the COVID loan. Right, it's called the refinance loan. First, they started with 50 billion rupees loan. Then later, they came to the second stage, uh, stage also. Uh, what happened is bank, uh, Central Bank offered uh, capital moratorium and debt moratorium. Debt moratorium means you don't need the customer or the borrower, you don't need to pay the installment or the interest for six months, that's the maximum. Mm -hmm. So the next six months, it started in April, still September, uh, the customer doesn't need to pay anything to the bank. Mm -hmm. So he can revive his business, start and settle down during the six months. Bank will be out of funds, we'll have a liquidity issue, mm -hmm. and uh, we were given that option to customer. Number two, we gave them another option called the customers who are really doing well during COVID time called capital moratorium. Mm -hmm. That is, you have to service only the interest, you don't need to service the capital. So there are two laws. One is debt moratorium, other one is capital moratorium. So this capital moratorium, few people took it because everybody wants that debt moratorium benefit. So we were short of funds. For that, Central Bank also realized banks were out of funds. And what Central Bank did was they were also favored us, they were also supported us. Uh, I didn't tell you this, when a customer deposit money with bank, banks will have to keep a percentage of money with Central Bank. It's called SRR, Statutory Reserve Requirement, right? When I started working with bank, that time the rate was 10%. That means if a customer deposit 100, 10 rupees to be kept at Central Bank. Now Central Bank gradually they brought it down, brought it down, and recently they brought it down to 2%. So the whatever the uh, money kept in Central Bank was given back to the commercial bank to lend. So we also had excess funds, it's called free cost funds. So we were able to manage the situation with this. That's a short-term strategy. <clears throat> Then the central bank gave few more uh, assistance to customers. So if you are a salary person, you don't need to pay your credit cards for six months. You don't need to pay your pawning for six months. So there were a lot of uh, uh, assistance gave to customers, right? And we were also following that. On a long-term basis, uh, the central bank, with the central bank assistance, they gave a working capital loan for customers to borrow from bank at a lower rate, say 4% per annum, and start uh, reviving their business. And loans were postponed. They were given extra time to repay. There's a lot of things uh, banks were given. It. On a long-term basis, we gave my working capital loan payable for two years. Our HMB, we started another COVID loan scheme called HMB COVID loan scheme. Up to 50 million we gave a single customer for four year repayment. Mm -hmm. So likewise, every bank really assisted uh, uh, the customers to come up. But a lot of people took these uh, advantages. Totally, if you take uh, the, the refinance central bank uh, portfolio, we have 85,000, nearly 85,000 customers we have lent, mm -hmm. about 24 to 25 billion rupees. It's 150 billion rupees scheme so we have 25 uh, billion we have led so bank of Ceylon and people spend they have the major shares and commercial did about 27 or 28 and the other third of the fourth bank to give uh, the highest number of transactions we were even a small timer even a hundred thousand 
we want 25 million, 30 million, we help them. So that's the way we, we try to help on a short term and a long term basis. And um, the other thing I want to tell you is uh, this time is the NPA. During this short period, the six months period time, we also found a lot of loads, a lot of leases which were borrowed as fallen into non-performance, uh, non-performing category. So we are trying our best to uh, speak to the customer, given little extensions or even little further moratorium if they want and try to uh, revive their businesses. So we are doing it uh, to very good extent it's working well. Uh, about the six months debt moratorium strategy. Now, I would like to ask how did this affect the performance of the company? And um, what do you think will happen to the non-performing loans ratio once this moratorium uh, expires? When you have a debt moratorium, right, out of your portfolio, say 30 to 40 percent is not servicing the loan, so you have an issue. So that issue we felt it, but because banks like us, we are giants, you know, we didn't have much issue, but that's the issue. Every bank had it. Even a small bank would have faced it very big way so when you have the debt moratorium this liquidity issue will come and the other one uh, i want to stress is uh, uh, as i told you we gave eighty-five thousand numbers of loans uh, thing we gave our worry as you said by the end of march next year when this moratorium ends how these customers are going coming back and servicing this loan. That's very, very important. So my personal point was that willingness to pay, if customer has the willingness, I'm sure definitely. I have experience. There are some genuine customers doing very well before COVID. They got hit on this. So they came and spoke to us. We have issue. We help them. But I'm telling you, Tashwood, they are servicing it very well now and they have saved a lot of money during this time mm -hmm. because they were focusing on the business correctly they didn't misuse anything people what they thought was okay the excess one they bought vehicle and lands and jewelries. these guys focused on the business they accumulated what wealth whatever they have they invested and they are doing well so <clears throat> it's a question all banks have this question after March 2021, what will happen? Where things happen in another two months time in March? Where things happening if the COVID trend, another phase two started, now England is in crisis, Canada, UK, USA, all in crisis. I don't know if it will come with this uh, tourism coming in. I don't know whether we will have the same problem. So we can't predict it. But if goes well, then we will get our money back. At least we also feel another 50% of these customers who borrowed may find it difficult to settle it. Then they will have to start uh, repaying. And then the loans, what we gave, the working capital loans, what we gave, there are also there is a cap that we gave a six months grace period. So during six months, you don't need to pay any installment. You have to service only the interest. So that six months also be extended by further three months or six months. So that will also start working somewhere in March 2021. So we are also waiting what is going to happen. But now the economy is slowly picking up, right? Now the badly affected industries at the moment, the main key is tourism and the imports of vehicle the vehicle importers are really stuck they, nothing is happening they are only doing on the local vehicles so they have an issue other imports are the only the essentials are imported other non-essentials are not imported so until the economy is fully back to normal this crisis will be there but we'll presume that by march if thing goes well we will be in a question to get our money back or else we'll have to give them further moratorium to support them because otherwise if you go and squeeze and ask for money they can't pay then they will be in difficulty so we don't want we are doing this not to put them in difficulty we assist them we have a reshadowments facility uh, we have extension of facility a lot of things banks can give during this time so we are supporting them 
came especially like our is unit yeah you know special watch list customer unit there yeah. so we watch the uh, customer performances and take uh, appropriate decision that time apart from these moratorium strategy and uh, like what's uh, said about the srr and all uh, what other central bank measures were introduced during this time in support of banks and and how supportive were they actually yes the well, central bank was actually very supportive because without central bank is the bankers to the bank you know mm. so they were very very supportive from the day only the central bank only started giving the working capital loan they pumped 50 billion money to the market and we gave them then later uh, the central bank wanted banks to we had excess funds so central bank uh, wanted us to lend and they gave a credit guarantees for example you lend to a customer 500000 if that customer default the central bank will pay a certain percentage of money back right so that credit guarantee was given to us so in addition to that you know when we had excess funds the idea we had a limitation for a week so much of money you can go and park at central bank so those things were relief so we can any amount you can go and move in and uh, central bank was very supportive even and they were very supportive about the customers as well right credit cards is a clean uh, business right and there is no security any customer walk in with the right area we give it so interest rates were very high they brought in cap steady cap means the maximum rates mm-hmm. for pawning for uh, leasing for credit cards lot of facility brought in caps and they just told right okay wait we want to bring down the interest they brought down the interest right <clears throat> except the uh, uh, senior citizen government scheme which fetches at 15% per annum all the rates came down and because banks want central bank wants to make sure that we, we we manage this economy at a single digit level so we brought the interest rate down and uh, uh, they gave uh, assistance to uh, banks to support the economy support the businesses and the funds were given at a cheaper rate and we have a lot of refinance loans foreign funded refinance loans available so we were able to lend it now recently last thursday we saw advertisement in the paper hmb is offering loans for customers at 4.75% so where in the world you can get it for that price so lending work very brought it down to very cheaper rate right? so-, so i would like to ask sir now as you said right the government has i mean government in the sense the central bank has introduced a lot of strategies in support of banks and even hmb has its own strategies to survive with this uh, covid-19 situation so using these strategies that have been implemented now uh, with the help of those strategies where do you think hnb will be within the next 5 years another 5 years time with the economic plans of the new government working with working well and uh, if the sme goes well uh, we can expect uh a uh, double digit growth so when that moves well slowly the economy will grow uh, <clears throat> our per capita income will grow people living style will improve everything will improve so i'm sure in another 5 years time if everything goes well then because uh, before covid the entire banking industry npa was uh, about 2.5% maximum npa before covid or before uh, this uh, is a sunday crisis now it has gone up to about 4.5 to 5% that means double so we must curtail that so that's all the questions i have for you today sir so uh, i would like to thank you especially on behalf of, our, of my uh, colleagues also Thanks. for joining with us today for the time you took to join with us and for the valuable information you shared with us today sir thank you thank you very much guys thanks bye bye banks work as intermediaries before the easter attack and covid-19 banks were doing well and had good profits but after covid-19 they lost their many businesses and debt moratorium and government policies further affected them 
but Central Bank of Sri Lanka always there for them and with the aid of online banking system. Now banking sector of Sri Lanka rise up again and heading to a successful journey.